I would like to call up uh, the participants for this debate, uh, which are um, representatives from the authorities, as we also have uh, representatives from the uh, environmental movements, the Norwegian NGOs, two of them. And um, while they are having their uh, headphones, I will try to introduce them to you. Okay, I could start from, uh, from left. We have uh, Mr. Per Strand, who is uh, the director uh, in uh, the Norwegian Radiation Protection Authority. And uh, Joni Almesta, who is sitting beside him, you already know him. He is uh, from the Norwegian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, the last speaker we heard was uh, Gennady Matisso from Kula Science Center. And next to him we have uh, Nils Bömer, who is uh, a representative. Uh, he's not only a representative, but he's uh, a nuclear scientist who is working with the Norwegian NGO, Bellona. Um, and here to the left we have um, Timme Ellingjord, who is an activist from the Norwegian environmental NGO, Young Friends of the Earth, Norway. So, then we have all the participants who are going to uh, have something to uh, contribute within this debate. I would like to start with the young activists, because you are always um, never, I must say, maybe you never, you are never uh, satisfied with the situation. Is that right? Well, uh, I don't think we could say we are satisfied uh, with the situation we have right now. Uh, of course, the the Barnes Corporation uh, in all or something we we are glad that we have, um, but uh, especially the situation uh, with the what we work mostly about is the the coal and nuclear uh, plants. And as the presentation from the Radiation Authority says, it's it's the, the great, greatest uh, challenge, and it could be the greatest uh, disaster if something happens. But uh, what, what do you see as the greatest challenges in this field? What is the danger for us? Well, the danger is that the reactors are actually uh, still working. Uh, they are old, uh, and according to uh, scientists, according to uh, our organization, we think that uh, uh, the, the, two, the four reactors in, in the coal and nuclear power plant should be closed. Uh, so. We see it as problematic that the Norwegian government give funding to this nuclear power plant. Uh, you could say that it increases the, the safety for Norway, uh, but on the same side, uh, Russian uh, authorities, nuclear authorities, says that this is also making the power plant safer so that we could prolong uh, the, the period of, of working. But, but you say that uh, this uh, nuclear power plant is not safe. But the Russian authorities, they say it is safe. Don't you trust them? In this point, uh, I would say no. Because uh, it's also about the construction of the, the power plant. And I am sure that Nils Bermer could say a lot more about this than me. But uh, one fundamental problem about the coal power plant is, for example, that you don't have a dome, you don't have a capsule that uh, protects the power plant. If it happens a disaster in the power plant, you, would, you wouldn't be able to prevent the leakage as you did in Fukushima, for example. Okay. Accidents happen, we don't want accidents, but if they happen, you have to be prepared for it. And the best way to be prepared for an accident in call a power plant is to close it and decommission it. Okay. Nils Bömer, you are also, uh, but you are, you are a scientist within this field. Uh, how would you evaluate the security uh, of the, the nuclear industry in, uh, in uh, the Kola Peninsula? 
Well, I think there is two main concerns from our side. One is the Kola nuclear power plant, which uh, Timmy was talking about. And there is uh, widespread uh, agreement that it's not possible to get Kola nuclear power plant up to what you say, international level of, uh, of, of safety. That is not possible. You have to be then build. But then the again, the Russian authority says it is yep. safe. Yes, but at the same time, we see that there's a lot of um, weakness with the, the Russian uh, nuclear control system. Uh, this, the, the nuclear, uh, the, the, the Russian answer to NRPA has been weakened late, latest years. There have been re structuring of their placement in the, inside the government. So they have quite weak role there. So it's, and also we see that um, when it comes to the uh, question about prolonging the lifetime, which will happen quite soon on the, from the oldest reactors at the Kola nuclear power plant, we see that the Russian law stipulates that there should be an environmental impact assessment, but that is not being done because the, 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 the Russian, the, the Kola nuclear power plant has so strong position so they can overrule the Russian law. And that means that there is no independent expert that can verify what the Kola nuclear power plant says. So that is a weakness within the Russian system. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gennady Matisov, um, here we listen to these uh, Norwegian NGOs who are working for um, uh, a clean nature. You also say that all your measures around up in the north shows that the waters here are, uh, they are clean. There, there has been uh, no contamination, as I understand you. Uh, but what do you say about these uh, N Norwegian NGOs that does not have any uh, confidence in the Russian authorities of what they think about this? Uh, situation. Что мне не очень нравится? Я думаю, что и губернатор, и его заместитель, и ядерный надзор. Все-таки это довольно ну, нормальные люди. Никто в ответ себе делать ничего не будет. Но это же надо понять. А то получается. Кольский полумостов Украина, главная угроза Норвегии. Да не угроза мы, мы мирные люди. Мы мирные люди. Я с 1988 -го года занимаюсь радиоактивностью. Знаю, что это такое. Мы с Альвидали купались в черной губе, где плутония, если мне не изменяет, э, около 2000. По Цезию было 1400, э, мы толком-то не знали, сколько там было. Я не думаю, что и военные наши, и командование флота, что оно тоже вот как бы недопонимает. Нет, они делают все возможное. И спасибо норвежцам, что они, они нас контролируют. Мы и сами себя контролируем. И мы знаем, что... Кто думал, что будет в Японии такой случай? Мы же тоже не думали. И никто не думал. Но он случился. Да, беспокоиться надо. Но не надо пугать людей. Я вообще не сторонник пугать людей. Давайте мирно работать. Никого не пугать. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, per Strand, you are from the uh, Norwegian, how to say, surveillance authorities or, or the, the, uh, the authorities that uh, really deals with the nuclear uh, issues. Do you believe in uh, this, that this area is really safe? All nuclear sources have a risk. It's in, impossible to make uh, something without risk. Uh, so, so it it is which level of risk we are talking about. What we saw on the video is that we have been focusing on reducing the risk uh, as much as possible. And uh, that is also the case with the nuclear power plant. It has been reduced and, it ha and it's better prepared. We have got more information, but uh, it still is a risk but it's the level of risk and what is acceptable connected to that level. But, but do you agree with these uh, environmental NGOs that the, uh, the Kola uh, power plant, nuclear power plant, should be closed down? The, uh, uh, the Kola nuclear power plant, uh, compared to many other power plants, do have a high risk. That's, that's correct. That's it's diplomatically very, said. It's yes. a, it has a high risk. Yes. So that does mean that you 
would like it shut down. Or what, uh, what our main mandate is, is to work with, with Russia to reduce the risk and mm. to uh, improve uh, the capacity, if something happens, to reduce the consequences of a potential Okay, we, we saw in the, in the film that uh, Almast has shown that uh, the incidents, the number of incidents has uh, decreased dramatically. Yep. So there has been an improvement on this uh, coal power plant, so it's now much more secure than it was. But if it's going to be prolonged for another period of uh, maybe 15 years, uh, will you as... Uh, uh, Norwegian co-partner in this also uh, work uh, further on with this Kola power plant to ensure that it is safe also in the future? Uh, it's not our responsibility to ensure it's safe. That's the Russian authorities' responsibility. We, we uh, from, from uh, on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we try to in, are involved in, in, in reducing the risk, but I think this topic is a continuously up to uh, um, uh, uh, assessment what, what, what will Norway participate in. We will give scientific and uh, technical advices and then it will be up to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to put on the politics on it. Okay. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, are you willing to uh, go on with the cooperation in uh, making the Kola power plant uh, safer? place or a safer plant. So uh, for 18 years, uh, Norway and Russia has had this joint commission meeting, uh, uh, an annual meeting where we kind of take stocks uh, of uh, the challenges and uh, the tasks that we have solved. And uh, the nuclear power plants at Kula is one, one uh, issue that is uh, frequently raised. Norway has been quite clear. We have uh, raised our voice that we would like to see the oldest reactor closed down. So that is openly, that is a clear, clear position from the Norwegian politician. But at the same time, as we saw in the movie, the incident has been reduced for many years now. Mm -hmm. And we also had a uh, visit this uh, uh, power plants uh, that was, I think it was two years ago, uh, and uh, it was quite impressive, uh, at least uh, what uh, our uh, sci scientists also could report uh, back to us. But still, as... Uh, you say it was interesting what they reported to you. What did they say to you? No, no. Uh, of course, they could say the same as we can see from the, the monitoring uh, system that uh, the incident had been reduced tremendously mm. for many years. So is it safe in your... Uh, what do but, you but still, uh, it's, it's yeah. more important that we keep a good dialogue with our neighbor and try, because they, they are totally independent, they can take their own decision on this. Mm. And if Norway kind of say we will not join into this that would not ha help anything. It's so it's, in, to have so a it's in our interest that we cooperate it's with It's still a uh, Norwegian interest to have a close uh, cooperation, maintaining close open cooperation and f for this management of these uh, challenges. And still, uh, everyone, most of us, know that there is going to be taken a decision quite soon if the, the license is going to be extended. Okay, Mr. I would like to make one point because... Uh, as Almesta uh, showed in his presentation, there is a, maybe a risk factor, reduced risk factor with a factor 100. But if you look into what has happened since Norwegian started their uh, safety project on the Kola nuclear power plant uh, back in the early 90s, we have first had the both two oldest reactors has been prolonged for each 15 years, and most likely the both all the, the two oldest reactors will get another renewed license for another 15 years. But, but, if you take, but, but if you take those 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, then you have 60 years of reactor years, meaning that that will equalize the, the reduced risk because you will have those oper reactors in operation for a much, much longer time in, so that the, the, the total risk for an accident during the lifetime would be essentially the same. 
But isn't this the same process that has been happening in uh, in uh, United uh, United States, in uh, Great Britain, and France, and so on? But Ma it, you have you have a certain yeah. time that is uh, for for the reactors. The, they are supposed to live for uh, 30 but or 40 years, and then the authorities prolong it. Yeah, but what is, what is so it? We are not against the policy of prolonging reactors, but it needs to be a robust system, a robust nuclear regulator, which can put forward the right uh, requirements in order to have that uh, prolonging, prolonging of the lifetime. We, did, we saw that that was not the fact in Japan, and we also see that the same is not mm -hmm. true in Russia. So we see the system is not robust enough to put forward strict enough rules to make the necessary uh, in investment in all the uh, infrastructure that are needed to make this prolonging do in a safe way. Okay. One last question on this uh, certain topic to Mr. Gennady Matisov. Um, is it safe to prolong the life of the two oldest, oldest reactors on Kola power plant? Ни у кого из тех, кто в зале сидят, Нет весомых оснований не доверять специалистам по ядерной безопасности в России вообще и на Кольской станции в частности. Не надо огульно говорить, что у нас снижен этот контроль. Но мы все-таки живем, в Мурманской области миллион людей живет. И вы думаете, я такая простая язва? Если бы там было что-нибудь так, я бы уже первый об этом говорил. Все-таки мы тоже отслеживаем. Кольский научный центр, он там вообще находится рядом с этой станцией специалистами занимается. Мое мнение никакое. Это может случиться независимо и у американцев, и у японцев, у всех, кого много атомных станций. И ядерных реакторов, в том числе на подводных лодках. У затонулого подводная лодка, помните, Трешер. Мы сейчас не говорим о этом. Это тоже было не только у нас. Вот. Поэтому надо все-таки доверять Перстан молодец, мне очень нравится свой подход участвовать в наших экспедициях, привлекать побольше специалистов из разных министерств и ведомств. Мы только принесем пользу. Вот. А если будем пугать, что там будет через 20 лет, через 30 лет, ну это не тот путь. Это не тот путь. Все-таки россияне это не, ну, не глупые люди, и мы тоже понимаем, что происходит. Бывают обстоятельства, да, бывают обстоятельства. А ведь перелов рыб, это мы с вами вместе сделали. А перелов трески. Это я просто немножко... Это же мы с вами вместе сделали. Нарушили экосистему Боинсовой без всяких ядерных взрывов. Но это же было. А мы молчим. Англичане сбрасывали, сколько они сбросили. Ну, сейчас, конечно, почти не, почти не чувствуется. Но они же тоже сбрасывали. Но никто их не ругал. Изучали, да, изучали. Контролировали, контролировали. И мы, и мы. А ведь были, большие уровни-то были. Так что давайте вместе работать. И доверять. Больше доверять. That's a good saying. Okay, let's uh, go on further then. There is another uh, big topic that is uh, also worrying the, uh, the authorities and the environmental movements. It is the Andreeva Bay and uh, the leftovers, I would say, from the activity uh, from this nuclear uh, submarine base. Nils Böhmer, um, you are an expert, so expert on this. How would you say this uh, kind of, um, the, the state of Andreeva Bay, uh, the, the enormous st stockpile of uh, nuclear waste that is there, what is the situation right now? Well, the Andreeva Bay is the main, um, one of the main risk factors left besides the Kola nuclear power plant. And during the latest 10, 15 years, there has been a lot of international efforts with Norway taking the lead to build up the infrastructure, everything from electricity to roads to cranes build, to, to replace buildings in order to safely take out the spent nuclear fuel. This work will, end, will be finished by the end of this year, early next year. But then the real risk work starts, na uh, namely to take the fuel out. And we don't know what kind of uh, condition the spent fuel is. But this is a big international project, isn't uh, it? Uh, yes, cooperation? This, yeah, to build up the infrastructure has been financed mainly or 
both by the Russian Federation but also from international community. But the funding ends when the infrastructure is in place. So what happens in 2017 when uh, the Russian is starting to take out the fuel? Will there be international expertise? Will there be international funding? What I'm afraid ah. of is that there will be too little expertise, too little funding, so that we risk that they will be taking shortcuts which could compromise the safety when you start to real risky work, namely to take out the fuel. Okay, let's start. Uh, le let's ask the Norwegian authorities then, the Norwegian Ministry uh, Foreign, uh, of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Almesta, uh, is Norway willing to go on and fund this uh, dangerous operation and very crucial operation uh, within a, a one and a half year from now? <coughs> I will say like this, uh, as, one of Russia, uh, as one of Russia's neighbors, we have a clear interest in maintaining close, open uh, a cooperation on, on this issue with, with Russia, also in the time ahead. As uh, Bellona uh, mentioned, uh, there is uh, a corresponding to the plans, uh, the transportation of this spent nuclear fuel is going to start uh, a pilot project maybe this year and then uh, they will start uh, the, 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 the huge uh, transportation in 2017. And it's a basic principle that the main responsibility lies with Russia on this issue. Mm. So that is also a, a clear understanding uh, with all the partners. And as said also, the international community is very strongly involved in the Andrea Bay. Uh, but the, 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 this sanction and all this politics that is going on between West and East now influence, influence on this? Still, uh, the project is, uh, will run until uh, 2017. And uh, there is one very important funding me mechanism uh, which is running by the European Bank on Reconstruction and Development. They have something 180 million euros. So still there is enough money. And... Um, they decided here uh, last year to extend uh, their program for five new years. So that means there is an opportunity to, to still uh, be present. Uh, but of course, the sanction and, and all kind of other uh, uh, political instruments uh, will also influence on, on, on these uh, issues. But still, it is Norway's interest to still maintain uh, an mm -hmm. open uh, are, are you invited to go on with this cooperation? No, there is no invitation and no kind of proposal for that yet. I think no is the focus to, to do the, the first thing first, and that is to, to keep up the, the good pro progress uh -huh. and, and to see if we can and, uh, finalize all the infrastructure to start the, the removal uh, uh, according to the plan in, in 2017. So that is the main or the first goal, and then we of course, we'll have some, uh, there might be some proposal uh, in the time ahead. Mm. But so far, no uh, proposal from the Russian side. Mr. Matisov, um, how, do you how do you look upon this um, critical moment when the transportation is starting to, uh, is starting to, to remove the, the spent fuel from Andreeva Bay? How do you consider it and the cooperation oh. from... Никто не спорит, и это разумеется, что чем меньше будет источников, и чем больше они, лучше они будут захоронены, спрятаны, это лучше. Вот. Но сегодня мы, мы же работали в Андреевой Губе, в прошлом году, позапрошлом, а явной прямой опасности нет. В будущем надо думать, надо вместе дальше работать. Если какая-то будет опасность, мы вместе будем поднимать и общественность, и журналистов, пока такой опасности нет. И надо это честно сказать, пока опасности нет. Никто ничего не может гарантировать. Но сегодня, на ближайшие годы, опасности нет. Хотя все может быть. Терроризм. Мы же, мы же не можем это предусмотреть. Живя на юге, я знаю, что это такое, и на Кавказе. Это вы тут не угадаете. Но мы должны стремиться, чтобы с точки зрения радиационной безопасности и террористической угрозы это было исключено. Вот моя позиция. Mr. Bermer, you also have something that you would like to add to this. Topic. Well, yes, it is correct that there are some funding available through the European Bank of Reconstruction, but it's still 
lacking a lot of funding. Meaning. How much? Well, I think um, uh, almost I mentioned that was 180 million in total in the IBRD, but mm. in order to safely take the whole Andreva Bay to make it a brownfield, which is the goal, then you will require 1 billion euros. So we are talking about a gap here of 700, 800 million euros if you're going to do it in a proper way. But what we see, if, that, if there's a lack of international funding, then there will be, and also a reduced Russian economy, we will see that will be reducing in the cost to try to minimize the, 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 that cost. And that could lead to some kind of shortcuts, which is not good for the environment. Okay. It is important to talk together. It's important to have this cooperation together. A lot is achieved. Not every project is finished, but this debate is has come to an end. Thank you very much to our participants. And uh, we are now going on with the next debate. So.